Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always. And today we're going to be going back to basics to take a look at how to use the mission editor here in DCS World. Lately, I've been getting a lot of comments on my videos and discussion in my Discord server from folks who are really intimidated by the mission editor here in DCS and don't know how to get started with how to create their own scenarios for how and where they want to fly on the DCS World maps that they've bought with the DCS World aircraft that they've bought. So with that in mind, today we're going to be creating a very simple but very functional and very fun little scenario here in the mission editor. We're going to break this video into two distinct parts. In the first part of this video, we're going to be delving into the mission editor and actually creating the mission together. In the second part of this video, we're going to be flying through the mission that we've created and I'll be describing everything that we did in the mission editor and how it all comes together from the gameplay perspective as it's unfolding around us. So for this video, I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and open up your copy of DCS World, go into your mission editor and create the scenario along with me as we watch this video. So even if it's on a different map or you want to fly with a different aircraft, that's totally fine. Go through the motions of the mission editor with me, pause the video, start the video, and keep following along at your pace so that way you'll have a greater understanding of how all the different parts of the mission editor roll together to create yourself a fun little scenario. So with that intro, let's go ahead and get started here. First off, we're right here on the main menu of DCS World. And to get to the mission editor, it's super simple. All you gotta do is just come over here to the right hand panel and click on mission editor. You're then brought to this very first screen in which we have two basic options here. We can either open an existing mission, such as a mission that you've already started creating and want to open it back up to finish it off, or say you've downloaded a mission from the Eagle Dynamics user files section and you want to edit that mission for your own needs. Do keep in mind that missions that you've bought from the Eagle Dynamics store, like campaigns, etc., cannot be edited because those are locked down. But for most of the time when I'm in the mission editor, it's all about creating a new mission. So we'll go ahead and do that here. We're then brought to the new mission settings panel. On this mission settings panel, we can see the map that we want to actually create the mission for. We can scroll through the different ones that you have downloaded for the install of DCS that you're currently in. You might have the World War II maps if you're doing a World War II centric uh, install. I've got mostly the modern maps for DCS installed at the moment. For today, why don't we go ahead and make this mission on the Syria map. For the coalitions panel, you can change which countries are assigned to which coalition very easily by clicking a country and then pressing the side you want it to be on, whether that's red, neutral, or blue. If we scroll through what we have on the red side, it's kind of a who's who and kind of the usual suspects of who's going to be the quote unquote bad guys from a Western centric perspective. We've got the United Nations peacekeepers on the neutral third side, and then we've got the blue side. It's kind of the usual suspects on the blue side. We've got the USA, Israel, the UAE, the UK, France, Belgium, etc, etc, etc. You guys kind of get the drill. For your actual mission creation, Keep in mind that blue side will shoot at the red side, red side will shoot at the blue side, but nobody will shoot at the neutral side, and the neutral side will not shoot at other people. From a gameplay perspective, this can be brought into a kind of a cool scenario in which like you have a neutral party, like between two belligerent parties who have say SAM sites or aircraft flying around, who you're gonna get spikes from their radars and things like that on your raw equipment, but won't actually shoot at you. So it can create for some interesting scenarios that way. With the DCS World Mission Editor, the sky is really the limit and is really only uh, you know, hemmed in by your creativity because there are so many different things you can do with the mission editor as you delve further and further into it. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we can see the assets for the mission are loading into the mission editor, or the assets for the map that is. 
kind of a cool little side effect of the mission editor here in DCS that I think more people should be aware of is if you have a PC that maybe isn't quite as cutting edge as you would like it to be and you're trying to join a multiplayer server or load up a campaign mission that is just taking forever, go ahead and open up your mission editor and open up a map that is on the server you're trying to join or the campaign mission you're trying to fly. And that will load a lot of that map's assets into your PC's memory. So that way it's a lot faster to load into that server or that campaign mission. So keep that in mind. And it's definitely an awesome little tip for you guys out there who maybe are a little bit lacking on the PC power department. So when you're first greeted by the mission editor, it looks really complex. It's like, holy crap, how do I even, you know, begin to create something here in DCS? And the biggest piece of advice I could say to you guys is have a plan. Have something in mind that you would like to create, whether that is a little dogfighting scenario in which I just want to spawn in myself in a jet and a MiG-21 and we just go right at it, or I want to create a little strike mission, or I just want to do some free flight and explore the map. Have an idea of what you want to create before you hop in, so that way you won't get so overwhelmed. For today, we're going to be creating a small strike mission in where we have an Israeli F-16 or a couple F-16s fly into the Damascus area to drop some bombs on some Iranian IL-76s that are dropping off an arms shipment for Iranian militias that are fighting in the Syrian civil war. The Israelis don't like that in real life, and they definitely constantly bomb the Iranians for doing that exact thing. So we're going to try and uh, create that here in DCS World in a very simplified format for you guys to follow along with. We're going to be creating an intercept uh, from some MiG-21s. We're going to be plopping down some SAM sites, and we're going to be plopping down some target IL-76s for us to bomb. So... The way we manipulate the map and can move around the map is we want to right click with our mouse and then we can drag our view around the map pretty darn easily. If we want to zoom in, we can use our mouse wheel. If we want to zoom out, we can also use the mouse wheel. And here on the Syria map, because it is such a massive map, even fully zoomed out, I can't see the whole map without moving the view around a little bit. <laughs> kind of cool. It's definitely the biggest map in DCS and it has the most airfields. When it comes to getting ready to plop an aircraft down on an airfield, there's a couple different types of airfields we can look at here on Mission Editor. If we have a little white airfield that's only white with no filled in blue, that's a helicopter port. And you won't be able to spawn any fixed wing aircraft at that little airport such as this helicopter port and these two over here in Damascus. If we find a small airport like Karat Shimona here in near the Golan Heights, and you see that it's a little white runway with a blue circle around it with no rings, you know that it's a very tiny airport. And it's really only going to be good for your lightest of airplanes in DCS, like, uh, you know, the Kristen Eagle, the Yak-52, Warbirds in DCS, things of that nature. If you find an airport like Meza here in Damascus, where there's a single ring, that's kind of a more medium-sized airport, and that's going to be good for tactical jets, your, your F-16s, your F-18s, your F-14s, your JF-17s, things of that nature. Then, of course, we have the very large airports, like Damascus International Airport here, with two rings. And airports with two rings have nice long runways. They're usually uh, longer than 8,000 feet, most of them are around 10,000 feet, and are going to be great for, you know, putting down aircraft like tankers or AWACSs or transport planes, things of that nature. So with that in mind, and thinking about what we're going to be doing for creating our mission, we're going to go ahead and move the map over to Ramat David Airfield here in northern Israel, where we're going to plop down our F-16s and talk about the granular control you have over the different flights of airplanes. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on Ramat David. And just zoom in, you know, if you're following along and trying to create a mission as you're watching this, just zoom in on the airport where you want to start off your airplanes, whether it's single player or a multiplayer mission, and uh, keep on following along as we're going through the different steps here. As we can see on the airfields when we zoom in far enough, we have little numbers. And these are just the numbers of the different parking spots where we can have different jets spawn if we so choose. 
And so I kind of like always spawning in these hardened shelters. Those are kind of fun. So we'll plop down a couple of Israeli F-16s on the map. Building and creating a mission is really all about plopping different objects through the objects panel down onto the map and forcing them to interact with each other, usually in a very violent way. <laughs> uh, so we'll go ahead and we will click on the little add slash modify airplane group button on the objects panel. The same button exists for helicopters, ships, tanks, uh, templates, which are multiple groups of different types of units, as well as static objects. Those are going to be things like buildings, bunkers, even um, you know effects like large fires and large uh, plumes of smoke, things like that. But we'll get into that later on. So once we have one of these selected, like our airplane panel here, we can see the airplane group pops up here on the right. And to plunk it down onto the map, we'll just go ahead and give it a left click. Now, we can, now that this object is actually on the map, we can go ahead and edit it through the airplane group panel that pops up over here on the right. We have all the things that are about the unit and then things we can change about the behavior of the unit down below. So let's go ahead and give it a discrete name. When we plunk different objects down onto the map, the, they get a very generic name like Aerial-1. If we were to go ahead and copy and paste, we would see we just get another Aerial-2. So that can be kind of difficult to keep track of all these very generic names. So right off the bat, I like to go ahead and rename my objects so that way I know exactly which objects I'm editing and when. So that way I don't mess up my mission accidentally. So let's go ahead and call it F16C Strike. And that way we can always know when we're dealing with our player F-16 strike. And then as a matter of caution, right when I go ahead and create the first object on a mission, I go ahead and file and save the mission. And we'll go ahead and call it Mission Editor Tutorial. And it saves in your DCS.OpenBeta or DCS Save Games folder under the file name of missions. I have some new folders inside here that I use to kind of uh, clean up my missions folder to keep from losing different mission files because I have a whole bunch of them as a content creator. But we'll just leave, let them go directly into the missions folder here, just like will happen with you guys when you save a mission. So we'll hit OK. And that way we can just very, very easily just go file, save all the time to make sure that if DCS gets unstable or crashes on us, we won't lose too much of our work. Because DCS is always a work in progress and it can be stable and sometimes unstable, sometimes the mission editor crashes, sometimes DCS as a whole crashes, I'm always going to the file and save to make sure I save my work periodically. Very same practice you would if you were writing a paper or a Word document or something of that nature. So we'll go ahead and click on our little aircraft group here, and we'll click on our waypoint one, and we'll go ahead and delete that for now. And we have it named F-16C Strike. We'll go to the country, and we'll scroll down, and we will go ahead and find Israel, since we're taking off from Ramat David. And we'll take the task and we'll make the task ground attack. So that way our AI wingmen actually drop their bombs on the target and we get the correct uh, commands to enable our wingmen to drop their bombs on the target. For the type, of course, we don't want to fly an A-10A. We want to fly an F-16. So we'll come down here and we'll find the F-16 CM Block 50 on the list here. You'll notice that there's some white airplanes and some yellow airplanes. The yellow airplanes are airplanes that you have downloaded and are ready to fly. The white airplanes could be modules, but maybe you don't have them actually downloaded. And they could just be AI units who are not actually flyable in DCS. So we'll go ahead and select our F-16CM Block 50. And then for skill, this is where we actually get into whether we're setting this aircraft to be an AI airplane with the different skill levels of Rookie, Trained, Veteran, and Ace, or Random, or whether they're a client or a player. 
the difference between client and player is very negligible. Basically, you want to set it to client if you're trying to have multiple groups of airplanes that are going to be flown by clients in a multiplayer mission. But because today we're going to be going kind of a more of a very simple single player centric scenario, we'll just set it to player. And so then I like to go ahead and take the name of the group up here. I like to go left control and C to copy, and then I put it into the pilot name down here. Now this is not the name of the pilot per se, such as like the pilot who's flying this jet is named John Smith. This is just the name of the unit itself. So if you wanted to do say a more advanced trigger, like this particular F-16 gets blown out of the sky, then this happens, um, or X, Y, or Z happens, then you can find that unit's name very, very easily. Otherwise it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So just keep that in mind as you get more advanced with your um, mission creation. Then we can come down and get some more further, you know, uh, details with the aircraft itself. We can change the call sign of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and be called Dodge on the radios and we'll be Dodge 101. Simple and easy. We can change the tail number there. Folks who are making, say, uh, missions for aircraft carriers will definitely want to change that tail number so that way they can be called by the uh, tower of the aircraft carrier by the tail number that they want. We can also change the default radio frequency for uh, this aircraft, um, and that will change the uh, default frequency for the COM-1 in the F-16. So, for instance, if we change this to, say, 251, that would change that default channel one frequency for the ARC-164. So we'll just bring that back to the default of 305 for today. And then going back to the waypoint or route editing section, for this first waypoint that we're at right now, waypoint one, where we plunk down this group, we'll go ahead and change it over to a takeoff from parking hot and we can see it snap to one of the actual parking spots on Ramat David Airfield down here. Pretty simple and pretty easy to use, but let's say maybe instead of having him start in spot 30 here, what if I wanted him to set instead to spot, uh, start down here in spot 27? Very easy to adjust. All we gotta do is go over here to where we said type and then parking spot. Let's go to spot 27, and that just moves him right down there. Very, very easy to adjust that. And then if we want to start adding waypoints to the map, all we got to do is click the add button. We'll zoom out. And because I like to use uh, runway 33 is kind of my active runway here at Ramat David, we'll go ahead and plunk a waypoint down here on the coast of Haifa. So that way we'll have a nice, easy, straight out departure right to the coast of Haifa. And then we'll kind of fly up the coast a little bit and inland out towards the Golan Heights, where we'll then incur into Syrian airspace. So why don't we go ahead and plop another navigational waypoint down here at the Golan Heights. And we'll go ahead and plop a IP point for us here near Damascus International Airport. And let's see how far away I plop that down. About 16 nautical miles for an IP point or initial point, that kind of that uh, last point you get before you hit the target, I like to have it at least 20 nautical miles away. So that's gonna be better, kind of near this uh, town of Kwatana here in Syria, a little bit to the west of Damascus. And we'll drop down a target point on top of Damascus International Airport itself. So that way we can find the airport with a targeting pod, find those bad guy IL-76s on the ramp down there, and then drop our JDAMs on them. And then finally, we'll go ahead and make an egress point down here further to the south. So that way we can run away from Syrian air defenses very quickly and easily once we've dropped our bombs. We'll plop down a Another waypoint right down here, whoops, right down here at the edge of the ILS for runway uh, 33 at Ramat David. So that way we can grab the ILS if we need it on our way back in to Ramat David. And then we'll plunk another waypoint down on top of Ramat David. We'll go to the type 
and we'll just set it as a landing point. Keep in mind that with uh, modern aircraft like the F-16 or the F-A-18 or the JF-17 Thunder, as you place your waypoints, the different speeds and altitudes come into play because you can see where that waypoint is in your HUD in the F-16 and where the targeting pod will be slewed to initially in the F-16. So same thing with the F-A-18 and the JF-17 as well. So as we go through our waypoints here, we've got waypoint zero is takeoff. For waypoint one, why don't we set this to an altitude of 15,000 feet? That'll be our cruising altitude. We'll highlight it, control copy, and we'll paste it to, whoops, control copy, and we'll paste it to our waypoints as we fly along. And then for waypoint zero at Damas or waypoint four at Damascus, we're gonna set an altitude of zero and that will automatically repopulate to the ground level, which is gonna be 2,008 feet where that waypoint is at Damascus International, which is gonna allow us to snap that targeting pod down onto the runway at Damascus International, help us find those IL-76s very easily. If we kept it up at 15,000 feet or the default altitude of 6,000 feet, our targeting pod's gonna be looking at that point at that altitude and make it harder for us to actually find our target. So just keep that in mind, guys. Then as we rock, walk through here, we just have, we'll make our crew, we'll set our cruising altitude again for our egress point and our runway lineup point, and that should be good to go. We now, of course, have our little strike flight set up and ready to go in terms of our navigation. So let's go ahead and throw some weapons on the jet. For that, we just need to go over to the payload panel right here with this little button. We'll click on that. And that brings us to a 3D model of our jet. This is probably the most fun part of making a mission is creating the loadouts in my opinion. And because I have a whole bunch of, you know, user-made skins for the F-16, that's why our Israeli F-16 is defaulting to a uh, Naval Strike Air Warfare Center aggressor F-16 skin. So we'll go ahead and click the drop down bar and we'll go to the 101 squadron for the IAF. It's always my favorite skin because of this cool little demon with his little old, old timey pilot helmet on his head there. <laughs> and so we will go ahead and create a new payload. And why don't we call it Mission Editor Tut for this tutorial. We'll hit OK and then we will start to fill in this new loadout. And we can see those populate on the aircraft as well, which is very, very cool. Uh, we'll just click on the little box with a right click that brings up the different categories of weapons that we can add to the different stations that we're clicking on. And we can see which station it corresponds to by bringing the aircraft from a frontal view here, and we can see that station nine is going to correspond to this outermost wingtip station, and station one is going to correspond to this outermost wingtip station. So to re reduce airframe uh, flutter and wing flutter, we're going to add our AIM-120s to the wingtips of our F-16C. We'll go ahead and populate our targeting pod. And then because we're going to have a little extra weight on this side of the aircraft because of the targeting pod, we're going to add an AIM-9 X-ray to Station 8 out here. And then we'll add another AMRAM to Station 2 on the left wing. And this is so that way we have a few more AMRAMs, but if we do have a enemy MiG sneak in real close into us with a dog into a dogfight, we'll have an AIM-9 X ready for him. But hopefully we'll be able to shoot him down at BVR in case we do get engaged by any Syrian MiGs. Next. To help defend ourselves against some Syrian SAM sites, we'll go ahead and we'll plop a AGM-88 Harm on Station 7 on our right-hand wing. For Station 3 on our left wing, why don't we go ahead and add a couple of GBU-38s to drop directly on top of those Orion IL 76s that we're going to place on the ramp at Damascus International. Then we'll go ahead and fill in fuel tanks on the rest of these stations. You never can have enough fuel 
especially in the DCS F16. So we are good to go there. And we can now, once now that we have the loadout ready to go for F16, we can add a couple of other units to our flight. So we'll go back to the airplane group panel up here and a unit will go ahead and hit this button here. And now we've created an AI wingman for ourselves, who is also going to be carrying the same loadout that we are. And we can change his skill level. Let's make him an ace so that way he helps us out pretty darn well. And we know that Israeli pilots are trained very, very well. So it makes sense to give our wingman the ace skill level. And we can swap back and forth between our self in the player slot and our wingman with the ace skill level right here. Like so, for instance, if we wanted him to carry, uh, let's say, air to ground missiles, if we wanted him to carry two harms instead of some GPU 38s, we would still be carrying GPU 38s. Now he's carrying two harms instead. But let's go ahead and give him some GPU 38s. So with that done, we can now go ahead and start building out the actual targets that we're going to be going up against, those interceptors, SAMs, AAA, all of that cool stuff. So everything that we just talked about here applies to creating a free flight mission, creating any kind of mission that you want in DCS. You gotta plop your aircraft down on the map, make the skill level either client or player, and hop in and get to flying. So now that we've done all that work, we want to make sure we go up here and hit save just in case DCS World crashes on us. And now I'm going to take a quick drink and we'll get to creating those target areas. All right. So we'll zoom in on Damascus International over here. And before I start making the actual air defenses and interceptors and all that, I always like to actually create the target that I know I'm going to be hitting. So we'll zoom in here and let's go for the military uh, ramp here at Damascus International. And we've got uh, one, two, three, four good big parking spots for some IL-76s right here on the military ramp of Damascus International. So for our targets being actual airplanes, rather than plopping down AI airplanes, we'll plop them down as static objects. So that way they don't have AI associated with them, with those AI actually taking up resources from our PC, which makes sense to me. I'm sure it makes sense to you guys as well. When you're also creating multiplayer missions, having aircraft on the ramp set as statics rather than uncontrolled AIs really, really helps with the server and mission performance as well. So to create a static, all we gotta do is come to the little bridge icon here where it says add or modify static object. We'll click on that and we'll come over here and we'll plop that static object down there. Now that it's on the map, we can go ahead and edit it. So for the name, let's change the name to static Iranian IL-76. So that way we can very easily identify that object in a list of objects if we needed to. For the country, let's go ahead and scroll down and we will select Iran. And you guys can see that very easily we can tell what coalition they are on. So say Jordan here has a blue dot and Iran has a red dot, Iraq has a red dot, which um, all makes sense and makes it very easy to navigate. For the category, we have a drop down list of basically every single object in DCS world, whether it's an airplane or a ground unit or a building, whatever it is, you can place it as a static object and have no AI associated with it. It'll just sit there and do its thing and wait to get blown up. <laughs> All right, so we'll go down to planes. I don't know why they named it planes for the category. It should really be like airplanes or aircraft or something because I mean helicopters are called helicopters not copters <laughs> so for the type we definitely don't want an A-10 let's scroll down through the whole list of aircraft available to the Iranian side and IL-76 MD cool and then as we zoom in we can see the actual unit has actually popped up on the map itself and we can move it around and place it wherever we want We'll put it over the top of this parking spot here. And then for the unloading, we'll make sure that it's on the correct heading. So we'll go ahead and move the little heading uh, knob here. And we can add in that heading there. And we kind of 
manually tune it, or if we want, we could actually use our ruler by clicking on our mouse and seeing what direction this line, center line of the taxiway is facing, 140 degrees. So we could click on our object here and type in 140 degrees. And that way we could actually get the perfect heading alignment possible. Hopefully these Iranian pilots were doing a good job and actually put their nose wheel right on the center line there. <laughs> and then let's say instead of having to go through and create that object four different times for the four JDAMs between our self and our wingman, all we gotta do is click on our object, control C, and wherever our mouse is, control V. And we'll just, we can see it's still in the same 140 degree heading. And we'll go ahead and go control V again, 140 degree heading and control V once again for the 140 degree heading. Awesome. So that's going to be our target area for today is this row of aisle 76s. So now that we've got those placed, file save just to make sure that we don't lose any of our work. And at this point, we'll go ahead and start putting together the air defenses that are going to be shooting at us and trying to prevent us from dropping our JDAMs on this target. So first off, a lot of folks tend to forget that there are templates of lots of different types of units that you may want to place on the map in DCS World. So let's think of a good place to put a SAM site for us. and. We we'll use the satellite to kind of see what's around here. We can use the map as well. Whoa, that's pretty pixelated, so that doesn't really help us. And looks like a pretty flat, open piece of desert over here. I think that looks good for a SAM site. So we'll go ahead and put it down here. And it looks like there's some berms there as well. So with that in mind, if we want to place down a template that's already put into our DCS World install by Eagle Dynamics, all you got to do is go to the two little boxes here where it says create and modify templates. Click on that guy. Then you've got your templates panel that opens up over here. For Russian built SAMs or Soviet built SAMs like the SA2 guideline that we're gonna put into in today, always go to Russia. And then we can hit the SA2 SAM battery. And then we can just plop it down on the map right there. And it's already ready to go for us. So we can then click on the number one object in the group, and then we can move them around. So let's say if we want them all to be inside this little area of berms, we can then go out to the other objects and move them around inside of the berm here. If we zoom in, we can see that we've got a Fansong radar unit. We've got a couple trucks. We've got a whole bunch of launchers around the area as well. But there is an issue with this SA2 template that is in here for the SA2 in the Russian templates, and that is it lacks a early warning radar. So when it comes to building SAM sites, you need to make sure there's at least one unit that is required of each type for that SAM unit to function. So for instance, if we have an SA2 guideline site, we want to make sure that we also go to the category, go to air defense, go to EW radar, or actually go down to the search radar, and then go to the SA2 slash three slash five P19 flat face. And if we don't have that in there, the SA2 site is not going to function. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and delete this SA2 site and build our own. So that way we know exactly how to create our own SAM sites and show you guys exactly how to make sure we have all the different units that are needed. File save once again, just so that way we don't lose any work. And we'll go ahead and go to the ground units, add or modify button. And we'll start off by just adding one ground unit and we'll go down and we'll choose the country, let's say Iran, because I know that Iran has access to the SA2 units that we need. For the category, we can select air defense, armor, artillery, fortifications, infantry, missiles, trains of all things, and unarmed as well. That's going to be things like supply trucks. So for today, of course, we're going to be into air defense, and then we can choose a subcategory. Currently, it's on all. 
or we can choose different subcategories there. So for today, we'll go to the search radar. The first thing we're going to need to make sure that the SA2 functions correctly. We'll go to the P19 flat face search radar. We'll add that guy. His skill level is going to be high and that's totally fine. And we'll rename the group Damascus SA2 site. And that'll work well for us. Then we're going to add a new unit. And when you add a new unit, it just duplicates the first type of unit you had selected. So for the second unit that spawns, make sure you have that selected on our unit. We'll go from search radar and we'll go to tracking radar. And we'll go down to SA2, S75 fan song TR for tracking radar. That's the second piece of equipment that we need placed on the map in that group to make the SA2 site work correctly. Then we'll go ahead and add, oops, uh, yep, we'll go ahead and add a third unit which seems to have not spawned here. What's going on with that? Oops. Delete. Sometimes this can be a little bit confusing as to how this is all supposed to work. And it looks like they spawned on top of each other. That's what happened. So if you ever get to the point where you need to move the unit around that is actually set as the number one unit, but you can't because it's moving as a, the whole group around, all you got to do now is just hit left control and it, you can then move it around independently. So to check our work here, we've got a flat face, we've got a fan song, and we've got unit three is another fan song. So now that we have the flat face and the fan song, we can start adding launchers. Now, most SA2 sites, at least from Soviet doctrine, had five or six launchers arrayed in kind of a uh, octagon or a pentagon shape around the actual launchers themselves. And you can see this uh, mirrored in lots of aerial imagery from like uh, the 1960s and 70s over Vietnam, or even from all the way up until the 80s over, um, you know, uh, uh, Libya or uh, Syria or Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula, places like that, where you can kind of get a good template as to how to actually place those SAM units around. So we'll place the radars in the center of the berm here, and we'll start adding the launchers. So we'll go to subcategory, launcher, and we want to make sure that we're placing SA2 guideline launchers. And with the SA2 guideline, the fat part is actually the, the bottom, and the skinny part is the launch rail. So we want to have these guys kind of facing out in different headings away from the radar. So we'll start adding in more launchers at different points. We'll kind of go for a hexagon shape with six different launchers. So that's three. We're changing their headings. That's four. That's five. And here comes six to finish it out. And we're changing the headings so that way they're lo looking at different headings all the way around the hexagon around the radars. And then if we wanted to be fancy, we'd, we could of course add in a couple other units and maybe we'll add in a couple supply trucks just to make it fancy here. So we'll add a couple of Ural 375s and we'll have these kind of arrayed around the radar itself. So that way they're supplying supplies to the personnel who are manning this SA-2 site. So, like I said, you can either build the SAM site yourself or find a template. Just make sure if you're looking at the template, you have all of the different parts that are required to make the SAM site work correctly. So we'll go ahead and file save to make sure it is all working correctly and everything is saved. So that way we don't lose any work in case DCS decides to crash. And then, so an SA2 site, that's all well and good, but now we need to add some AAA units around our cargo airplanes down here being unloaded, so that way we can have uh, some more close-in air defenses. So we'll come in here and we will add in another ground unit. We will go ahead and plop him down on the map here, and we will call him Damascus International AAA and that way we can always pick them out from that list of units. 
And, you know, honestly, to be quite honest, looking at the different countries, unless you're looking for a unit that is specific to a, you know, very specific country, it really doesn't matter. And I like to use Russia a lot because all of the red side units are basically um, attributed to Russia. And Russia made 98% of all of the stuff that's used in the Syrian civil war. So that's going to work out just fine for us. So we'll go to air defenses, we'll go to subcategory, we'll go to self-propelled AAA, and that's exactly what we want. We'll put in a Shilka uh, gun dish. So that's gonna be this guy right here. If you wanna take a look at the ground unit in question, because sometimes their different uh, names can be a little bit confusing, we'll go ahead and leave the, we, you go to the payload panel right here, or the ammo panel as it's called for ground units. And so we'll put him right here. He's going to be hanging out next to these cargo airplanes. And we'll put another Shilka around. We'll go ahead and put this Shilka over on the other side. He's going to be facing that direction. We'll add another one. Why don't we add a couple Su-57-2s? And that's going to be a another kind of SPAG self-propelled AAA with... Uh, some 57 millimeter guns. So that's gonna be make it a little bit more challenging for us because these uh, Shilkas will only have 23 millimeter guns and so they won't be able to fire as high up into the sky to reach out and touch us. So we'll add a couple Zoo 57s. I'll add three of them and we'll kind of array them around the map here to kind of create some defenses for these cargo airplanes, file save, and then why don't we go ahead and add a little ambiance to the target areas down here by adding in some, uh, you know, uh, support vehicles that are actually taking the weapons off of these cargo vehicles and then going to transport them to the Iranian militias. So we'll add in another ground unit here, we'll plunk it onto the map, we'll just leave the country as Russia for now, and we'll call it vehicles all right and then we'll go to category we'll go to unarmed subcategory that doesn't really matter we'll go for some euro 375 supply trucks and we'll just add a whole bunch of them so that way we can just kind of array these around the supply trucks down here we'll kind of move them here and we'll just kind of randomly adjust their headings so that way they're not all facing the same direction you can also do this with infantry. You can do this with any kind of units that are spread out around the different around the map to make things look a little bit more lively, maybe a little more realistic. But we're just keeping it simple for this very simple mission that we're creating today. Next, we'll go ahead and add in our MiG 21s that are going to kind of come and try and intercept us as we fly out towards the target area. So file save, always just saving periodically to make sure we don't lose anything. Next, we'll go ahead and add in a trigger zone. The trigger zone is something that can be very confusing to folks who are new to DCS world. And essentially all they are is an area on the map where if a unit gets inside of that area, then it can cause another effect to happen or trigger an action to happen. Such as if our F-16s fly into an area, then it's going to trigger some MiG-21s to spawn and try and shoot us down, if that makes sense. So, awesome. We'll go ahead and we will click on the Create Trigger Zone button down here and we'll plop a trigger zone down onto the map. Once again, we're gonna rename it because this generic name is really easy to lose track of. We'll call it MiG-21 Intercept. And of course, it's very important to write MiG correctly with a capital M, a lowercase i, and a capital G. <laughs> um, so that, we now have it placed on the map as MiG-21 Intercept. Now, before a recent update to the mission editor, all we could do was have circles, and we could just adjust the size of that circle to fit our needs. But what's awesome now is we can actually change this type of trigger zone into a polygon, which is awesome. All we need to do is go to zone type, go to quad point, edit, 
and then we can drag these quad points around and make a trigger zone that is our perfect shape. So for today, we can see the border of Israel in this tan line that kind of moves around the map here. And we can see it extends out here. And we know that this area right in here is the Golan Heights, a very highly contested region between Syria and Israel that was seized from Syria during the 1967 Six Day War. So let's go ahead and have, once our F-16s kind of reach the outermost edge near the Syrian border, uh, that's gonna trigger the MiG-21s to spawn. And at this edge of the trigger zone really doesn't matter. So we'll just kind of make it a little bit smaller there. And we should be good to go. That's going to be our zone. When our F-16s fly into this zone, it's going to trigger our MiG-21s to spawn. The reason why it's good to have a trigger for these kinds of things is so that way you're not just plopping a MiG-21 that's going to circle around the area a whole bunch, waiting for your strike flight to enter the area to engage them, because that those MiG-21s might run out of gas, or they might the AI might spaz out and they might crash, or they might just decide to land. So that way they are just going to spawn exactly when you want them to be ready to go in the mission. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and spawn in these MiG-21s. When it comes to spawning in interceptors, there's kind of a sweet zone, I think, when it comes to the range from your friendly aircraft where they should spawn and then start coming after them to, to shoot them down. I tend to think that that range is about 40 to 60 nautical miles. Any closer than that, and that's kind of like having a bad guy airplane pop up in your face and you're not really all that ready for it. But if you have them spawn at around, you know, 40 to 60 nautical miles, you'll be able to find them on radar, start to sort out, you know, talk with your wingmen and then get ready to engage those targets. If they're any further than that, then the AI risks kind of like getting off track and maybe deciding to land on an airfield or not flying all the way till their assigned points, things like that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and plop in our MiG-21s. We'll go back to our objects panel. We'll click on our airplane group editor. And let's see, from the edge of our trigger zone where it's gonna trigger those MiGs to spawn, let's look. So right on the ed furthest edge of like the Damascus metropolitan area is about 55 nautical miles. That seems about right. So let's go ahead and plop them down right there. And we'll rename them right off the bat like we have been doing. Let's call them MiG. 21 interceptors task cap should be fine and then we will change their type to mig 21 bis skill because the syrian air force isn't all that skilled let's go ahead and set them to uh the leader's going to be trained and then we'll set the wingman to rookie and we'll adjust their loadout with the MiG-21 in particular. The skins available for all different air, uh, air forces are available for any country that you plop down on the map. So we'll just leave them as Russia for now, just to make it easier. So let's go ahead and look for the Syrian skins. Do, do, do. It's Syria. So yeah, there's a Syrian skin for our MiG-21. And we'll give them a new payload. And we'll edit his, his payload here. We'll just make it a very easy payload to fight against. We'll just add a couple of R3Rs to the outermost pylons of the jet with a fuel tank on the center line. So that way he doesn't run out of gas as he's burnering trying to come after us. And I guess it's not all that to that much unrealistic because of the fact the Syrian Air Force or the uh, Syrian Arab Air Force that is is very much lacking in supplies as of 2021. Unit, we'll go ahead and add a second unit. And for the skill level of the wingman, the, the dash two of this flight, let's make him a rookie. That'll kind of help reflect the fact that the leader is going to be more skilled than the wingman. All right, so these guys are plopped onto the map here. And we're gonna have them spawn in the air as opposed to on the ramp. So they could either be at a turning point or a flyover point. For the sake of a very simple mission like this, they're more or less interchangeable. You don't have to worry about that too much. 
the altitude. Let's go ahead and have, have them spawn at co altitude with us at 15,000 feet. They're going to be flying at a speed of 430 knots. So let's go ahead and add up that. Let's make them fly at us at 500 knots. How about that? Then we'll go ahead and hit the add button for the waypoint creation tool. And we'll go ahead and have them fly out towards us about right here, towards the Syrian border with the Golan Heights. At this point, we'll have them kind of come around to the south here, kind of covering our egress route in case we don't shoot them down and we miss each other. They'll kind of be out here ready to jump us again once we hit our target. And they'll fly back out here towards the cover of their SAM site and they'll catch the ILS back into Damascus International Airport and will set their last waypoint as a landing point. I'm guessing they probably won't get there. They're probably gonna meet their fate with AMRAMs sometime in this mission. Now, very key to making all of this work correctly for you in terms of making sure they don't just spawn right away when the mission starts is to hit this option up here, late activation. So we'll go ahead and click that for late activation. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start with creating the actual trigger function, which is going to cause these guys to spawn once our F-16s fly into this MiG-21 intercept uh, trigger zone right here. So once again, file save after every action that we do in the mission editor. And then we will go up to the set rules for trigger button in the mission panel right up here. Now this is another point where guys tend to get very, very intimidated by the mission editor. And no need to be, just kind of take it slow. No need to go super fast, create very simple triggers like we're gonna start off with now, then watch YouTube videos or read forum posts to create more and more elaborate and interesting trigger zones as you get more and more comfortable with the system. So we'll go ahead and click new. And of course we'll give it a name, Make 21 intercept spawn and then we'll turn the color to red so that way we know it is a bad guy spawning event that's kind of how i kind of organize my triggers in my mind when i'm creating very complex mission with missions with almost hundreds of triggers is i just color code them and give them specific names for the condition, this is going to be how we actually set the mission editor to know that once those F-16s are in this, the um, trigger zone, we want them to then spawn the MiG-21s. So this is the condition. What has to happen for the action to occur? For the type, we'll scroll down to part of group in zone. I like to use part of group in zone or part of coalition in zone because of the fact that if we have, the, have to have the whole coalition or the whole group in the trigger zone, then if our AI gets a little wonky and maybe our AI wingman decides not to follow us around today, we don't have to wait for him to get into the trigger zone along with us to make those MiG-21 spawn. So it's only gonna require one of our F-16s to be inside the trigger zone for the MiG-21s to spawn. So our group that has to be in the trigger zone defaults to the highest alph alphabetical or numerical numbering system that you gave it. And this is why I make sure that I always give my units and my groups very discrete names. So that way, as I look at a list of items here, I can say exactly what I want, which is gonna be our F-16C strike inside MiG-21 intercept. I then want group activate, and I want the group to activate to be the make 21 interceptors and then as you're building missions for yourself in order to make sure that you're troubleshooting the mission that you're creating as you go along flying through it whenever i have a trigger at least for my testing phase i like to also give it a little message that's going to pop up for me to let me know hey the action that you wanted actually occurred so we'll go down to message to all so that way we get a message for everyone who's going to be in the mission if this were more than just a single player mission and we'll say make 21 trigger worked and it's going to be on our screen for 10 seconds 
So that's going to be very, very helpful for us. And at this point, I now like to double, triple check things that have to do with our trigger. So click on our MiG-21 flight and make sure that they are in fact set to late activation. And we'll go ahead and make sure that they have an action to complete besides just their original cap function. We'll go ahead and go to advanced waypoint options. We'll hit add, perform en route task, search and engage in zone, and we'll say a zone radius of, uh, let's say 80,000 feet. So that zone there, and they're gonna be searching for anything in the air on the blue coalition. This can be very helpful when creating a uh, multiplayer scenario in which you have, say, you know, Harriers trying to attack a target um, to make sure that those MiG-21s don't go after Harriers or don't go after uh, helicopters or things like that. That's just going to frustrate a lot of multiplayer clients by getting whacked by airplanes that they have no ability to defend against. So you could have make sure he's going not going after helicopters, not going after bombers, not going after multi-role fighters, but only fighters. But for our purposes today in a single player mission, to make it simple and make sure the AI works correctly, we'll go with air. And so there's one thing that we caught in making sure that we were um, you know, checking our work to make sure the mission is gonna work well for us. And everything is looking good. Our mission is ready to go, as is right now. We can go ahead and start it, fly through it, and have some fun. But now it's time to kind of beautify the mission a little bit. So we'll go ahead and file save. Let's come down here and let's add some fires around our target area. So let's say there was a cruise missile strike before we got to the target area that blew up a whole bunch of uh, facilities down here at Damascus International. We can go to category for the statics and we'll go static fire. And we'll go to effects big smoke, and then we can adjust the preset. Let's say huge smoke. I personally don't really like the way the fire effect looks. I think the just regular smoke looks a lot better. And we control, paste, paste, kind of paste some of these guys around here and make some of these guys some different sizes so that way the fires aren't all completely uniform, which would look a little bit funky medium smoke and we'll add just copying and pasting a few more of these guys medium smoke kind of make it so that way our players in the mission are able to find their targets a little bit easier because they knew there was a cruise missile strike beforehand and therefore they know that they're looking for some smoke in the target area and as well as the smoke is going to help obscure the target a little bit uh, for the players. So that way they're not going to be able to see those targets with their targeting pod quite as easily. So now that we've added some ambiance with some smoke, let's add some more awesomeness to the mission by going to the weather panel where we can adjust the start time of the mission and the date of the mission. For the most part, I very rarely change the date of the mission. And just so you guys know, the default start date of the 21st of June 2016, that evening of that date in real life and in the DCS World Mission Editor was a full moon, which applies to all of the maps in DCS. So if you want to create a, a night mission with a full moon, make sure you leave it on the 21st of June 2016 to make it very, very easy on yourself. And let's have a start at 06. 30 in the morning so it's going to be morning not quite dawn but just a little bit after that here on this map for the cloud layer let's go for something scattered five what's that going to give us two layers scattered large thick clouds broken 1820 yeah let's go with that and we'll bring the cloud base up to 13,000 feet and then for the wind time to add some wind We'll go back to our home base and we can see that the active runway is runway 33 and the reciprocal of that runway for the wind is going to be 145. So we'll just have some wind going right down the runway at 33 feet. So we'll go ahead and add uh, 150 so that way it's not totally perfect. And then that's going to be at 12 knots 
and then at 6,600 feet, it's going to be a little bit off, about 112 degrees. Let's add it be 12 knot. Eh, let's go for 20 knots. Then at 26,000 feet, it's going to be 35 knots blowing that direction. And eh, let's keep it coming about that direction. Uh, for the new uh, weather effects that are in DCS 2.7, don't add any fog or any dust effects. So we'll go ahead and hit save once again. And with that, guys, we should be ready to fly through our very simple, but hopefully very functional and very fun little scenario that we've just created very easily here on the mission editor of DCS World. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this, and I hope you guys did decide to actually open up your DCS World copy, go into the mission editor, and create this stuff along with me. If you haven't, please, please go back, rewatch this video, pause the video periodically to follow along as I'm creating this mission. You can Definitely swap out the aircraft that is going to be intercepting you, the aircraft you're flying for, say, an F-18 or an F-14 or whatever you want. You can swap out the different ground vehicles, the target areas. Just follow the actions as I'm doing them as you watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please give it a like and a subscribe if you did and it helped you out. And uh, fly safe out there, guys, and um, stay healthy as well. We'll go ahead and load this mission up and create part two of this video now.